Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in for this edition of I Do a Quest. Uh, Alright, so we've got these two points. Let me remind you that if we had two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, to find the slope, we would go y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or at y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Depends on who you ask. It doesn't matter, as long as they go in the right order. Okay, so if I had these two points and they, they, they were just all numbers here, right, we would uh, start trying to find the, the slope and go, okay, negative four minus, and then we have a y there, we'll just put a y, over negative four minus negative six. Okay, well that's a little bit weird because, um, you know, what am I supposed to make of that? I can't find the slope, but hey, oh, I was told what the slope is supposed to be. It's supposed to be one half. So, uh, well, let's think about negative four minus negative six. This comes out to be, right? Negative four minus negative six is negative four plus six is two. So this is two, right? Just like we know it's supposed to be. So it must mean that this part, negative four minus y, comes out to be a one. And you could just think about it and figure out what y should be, or you could just use algebra and solve for y. Uh, that should have been a four, plus four. Let's erase that little tail that it grew. All right, so we have negative y equals five, so y equals negative five. I suppose I should have just come over here and written this here, y equals negative five. In order for all this to come out, you know, be subtracted and find the slope to be one half, this y here would have to be a negative five. Let's see, if these are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, if they're parallel, they have the same slope. If they're perpendicular, they have opposite reciprocal slopes. And if they're neither, then neither of these things happens, okay? To graph these lines and to just look and see that, that you know, they, they look like they're parallel, they look like they're perpendicular, or they look like they're neither, it is not enough. Even if you have laser pencils and uh, super eyes, and, uh, and, and space paper, it's not good enough. You have to find the slopes exactly, okay? Because even with laser pencils and space paper, it could look like they're perpendicular, but it could be one one millionth of a degree off, right? And your eye would never be able to tell, okay? So to find out exactly if they're perpendicular or parallel, we have to find exactly what the slopes are. So let's find the slope for line A, negative seven minus negative nine. That's y2 minus y1 over 10 minus four. Negative seven minus negative nine is negative seven plus nine, which is two. 10 minus four is six, and so we have one third. So if B comes out to be a slope of one third, then they're parallel. If it comes out to be a negative three over one, they're perpendicular. And let's see what happens. Tensions are high. Negative four minus negative one <clears throat> over negative five minus negative six. Negative four minus negative one, negative four plus one, negative three. Uh, negative five minus negative six, negative five plus six is one. One third and negative three over one, that's opposite reciprocals. If I were to multiply these together, one third times negative three over one, I get a negative one, which is a test to see if, uh, if our slopes are opposite reciprocals. And that tells us that our lines are perpendicular. Perpendicular. Uh, that's it for that page. Onward. Okay. I loved some of the stories that I read on your quest. They were very entertaining and very creative, and I thank you for that. Uh, I was just looking for some basic stuff, so if you wrote me a basic story, that's fine. Um, the reasons why Denzel did the things that he did uh, are the parts that entertained me. But in this section here, for the amount of food right, to be increasing over time, well, that's basically all I was looking for. I was looking for, as time passed, the amount of food increased. right? So at first, Denzel got food on plate. Right? You, you said it like a caveman, it doesn't matter. Denzel got food on his plate, uh, you know, you said he went through the line, you know, th that really drives home the idea that you understand 
that it's not just a one-time thing. It's not like he just took a pile of food and dumped it on his plate. You know, he steadily added food. He's walking through the line, putting a little food. Walking through the line, put some more food. Put some more food. Put some more food. Gradually over time, right? Um, it's a rate of increase in food, not just a one-time thing. If it was a one-time thing and he just slopped a bunch of food on there all at once, it would go from here to here with nothing in between, right? Steady increase. He's just putting food on his plate a little bit at a time as he goes through the line. Then, right, we see no change in the amount of food. Why would that happen? It doesn't matter why it happens, but if you did tell me a, a good reason, he, you know, he was talking, he was looking for a place to sit, he went to the bathroom, like these were all fun to read. But in any case, um, no food uh, added or taken from plate, right? The adding to and taking away of food from the plate didn't happen, just stayed the same, okay? And uh, it really helps when, when you say something in a story that makes it clear you understand, like, nothing on the plate is happening. Yeah, everything is staying the same. So that was that section. Then this line is going down. When I describe what this line is doing, I, I say it's going down, right? As I move to the right, it goes down. Why would seeing, why would the line be going down? Well, if the if this vertical value here, this y value represents the amount of food, food is leaving his plate, could have fallen off, or most likely he was eating it, right? So he ate, ate some food. The food came off his plate for some reason. Okay. Now it didn't completely get empty. It didn't go down to the level that it was when we started watching Denzel do his thing. Um, it stays the same. So again, maybe he's talking, maybe he went to the bathroom, maybe he's taking a drink, maybe whatever. Uh, but it stays the same, right? Stays the same. And then what? Well, he goes back. Maybe he ate to the point where he's like, you know what? I really I didn't want this green bean casserole. I, I, I actually don't enjoy this type of cranberry sauce. So, uh, you know, I kind of just stopped eating and, and it's Thanksgiving. So you can do that and you can just go back and get more. Right? He got more at this point. Right? Maybe he got dessert. Maybe he got more of the stuff that he really likes. Maybe he nibbled on little stuff. And he's like, nope, don't like that, don't like that. Left it and came back and got more food on his plate. Okay. How much did the total amount of food change? I was just looking for like he has more. He has less than what he started with. Well, he started out with this much, which if you ask me, it's not no food, right? This is no food. Here's some food. So I'd say he started with some food and he ended with more than that, quite a bit more than that, right? So he uh, it increased, I would say a lot. It increased a lot, right? He started out with a lot. He ended with a lot more than he had at the beginning. All right, there you go. There's the story of Denzel and the food on Thanksgiving. Find the slope. All right, well, we've kind of already done this quite a bit already, so it's not really be a surprise that it's negative seven minus negative three over two minus negative two. Negative seven plus three is negative four, and negative two plus, or sorry, two plus two is four. That's negative one. There we go, eight minus four over four minus one. Eight minus four is four. 4 minus 1 is 3 4 thirds. Graph, okay. As I've said, please hear me so many times. Uh, hundreds of times might be an exaggeration, but it feels like hundreds of times between all the classes that I have and definitely over all the years that I've taught, it's definitely hundreds of times. If you don't know what to do with a graph, if you don't know how to graph a graph, always, always fall back on plugging something in for x. You can always do that. And as long as you don't do any math wrong, you're not wrong. Right? You at least get a point on the graph. And right now, when the graphs are lines and they're not curvy things, all we need to do is get two correct points, and then we know where the line is supposed to be. Okay? That method's not going to be the greatest when we go to graph these curves where, you know, it's not just two points, boom, connected with a line. But it's better to plug things in for x than to forget the trick for graphing them incorrectly, okay? Or to, to remember it incorrectly, or to, to forget it, or parts of it. So always fall back on plugging points in for x, unless you get the shortcut, unless you understand it, okay? So 
by uh, in this problem I'm going to plug in things for x and again reveal the shortcut okay so the shortcut comes from plugging in the, the convenient numbers for x what's the most convenient number for x zero always okay so y equals one seventh times zero minus four why am I even writing this all down because it's so easy to see that when I plug in zero for x I get negative four and that's the first part of the shortcut zero negative four right Plug in zero for for x, get negative four. That's what we. That's why we just look here and say this is my y-intercept, right? Y-intercept. I know that if I plug in zero for x, I'm going to get negative four for y. Easy. Okay. Next, All right, next part of uh, of plugging in things for x, and therefore the shortcut. It's let's plug in seven because when I plug in seven, remember what happens. Uh, it becomes very easy to multiply these two guys together, 1 7 times 7 over 1. Uh, we get 7 over 7, we get 1, right? Uh, in short, we, we cancel out the denominator here. So we get 1 minus 4, we get negative 3. Okay? So that means I, I've gone to an x of 7, 7, and I've just gone up 1, which isn't a big surprise because when I cancel out the denominator here, what am I left with? A 1. I add 1 to negative 4. Okay? If I were to go over another 7 to 14, right, the next number that would cancel out this denominator, I wouldn't get 1 this time. I would get 2 because 7 cancels with 14. I get a 2, right? A negative 4 plus a 2, which would mean I just go up one more, right, and over 7. I went over 7 more, I'd go up another 1, over 7, up another 1. That's why we have this slope. We have uh, 7 over, or right to be more accurate, and 1 up. We go right 7 and up 1. But no need to continue going over 7 and up 1 because I have already found these two points. There we go, we have a line. Okay, so y intercept and slope, remember that? And remember the slope is a rate, right? It's like um, every 7 seconds, one inch of water is added to that container like we've talked about so many times. Every seven seconds, one more inch of water is added into this glass here. Coming down, uh, we can see the y-intercept, right? Negative two. If I plug in zero for x, I'll get negative two for y. Okay. Uh, if I plug in two for x, two for x, then I'm going to come down one because it's a negative, right? I'm going to come down one. So go over two and down one. There are our two points. Now we have a line. If that didn't make a lot of sense to you, plug in numbers for x. Keep plugging in those numbers for x. And then, you know, maybe it comes a little later for you. Try and jump on that short, that short sh shortcut bandwagon, right? But if you're just trying to remember the shortcut and you can't remember it correctly, and you're missing, you're mix, mixing up the the over and the up numbers, or you're you're putting negative two on the x-axis or whatever. Just don't do that, okay? It's so much worse to keep trying and push forward and remember this uh, shortcut that you're not quite understanding and, and just make it work. Go back, back up to, I would use a Back to the Future reference, but not everybody would get it, but you gotta go back, okay? You can't keep going forward remembering this, this uh, shortcut incorrectly. Uh, go back, plug in things for X, and start from there, and then move forward uh, in a healthy way. Okay. It costs two fifty to rent a pair of bowling shoes. A dollar seventy five for each game bowled. Write a linear equation that models the cost of uh, cost y of bowling x game. So y is the cost, and x is the uh, games number of games. Let's pretend I wrote both of those words correctly. Okay, let's see. I know I'm gonna pay 250, right? I'm just gonna get two. I'm just it's gonna cost me 250 if I just show up and rent some shoes because I like the way that they they fit my feet. And I don't bowl any games. I just hang out with my friends as they bowl games. It costs me 250. But if I bowl a game, it's gonna cost me a dollar 75. Bowl another game, another set dollar 75, and so on and so on, right? So every time the number of games that I bowl goes up, the I pay another dollar 75, right? So I'm gonna add a dollar 75. 
once or twice or three or four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten times, however many games I bowl, right? So I'll just multiply that by the number of games that I bowl. Here's my equation. That's what I should have written on that line right there. Okay. First, you need to find the slope. Um, I could do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or I could just come over here and say, well, clearly I've gone over 5, and I've, I've gone up 6, right? Because I started at 3, so I've gone up to 9, and that's up 6. So I've gone over 3 and up 6 over, or sorry, over 5, not over 3, over 5 and up 6, 6 fifths. So what does it tell me? Uh, what does the slope tell me? What does it tell me about the number of pages being printed? So the y value is the pages, so I guess it is printed 9 pages after five seconds, okay? So what does it tell me, the slope? What does it tell me about the pages being printed? Well, it just took five seconds and it printed six more pages, so every five seconds, six pages are printed. That's exactly what the slope tells me because the slope, the slope is a rate of change. They are synonymous. They mean the same thing. The slope and the rate of change. Uh, write the equation and other line that contains the two points. So uh, finding the slope is probably pretty important. Negative 3 minus negative 3 uh, over, well, or, or both negative 3, so it doesn't really matter what I do next. I'm going to do 5 minus negative 1. Negative 3 minus negative 3 is 0 over 5 minus negative 1. This isn't really good. Or is it? Because 0 divided by 6 is just 0. Our slope is 0. Okay. Hmm. If my slope is 0, that means I have a horizontal line. Okay, this horizontal line goes through 5, negative 3, and negative 1, negative 3. Okay, oh, it just goes flat, right? 3, those points, right? It's got a y-intercept of negative 3 then, so it's got a slope of 0. The y-intercept of negative 3, 0 times x is just 0, so y equals negative 3 is the equation of this line. And it makes sense because every point on this line, no matter, pick any point you want, it's going to look like this, x comma negative 3. It always has a y of negative 3. y is negative 3. Always, no matter what x is, right? Just multiply x by 0, make it go away because it doesn't matter y is always negative 3. Okay, this one the same thing happened, which I, when I was grading these, I was kind of quite annoyed with myself that I had let that happen. Because I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want to have a slope of 0 on these. I, had, I even noticed that it would be that. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Negative 1 plus 1 is going to be 0 over negative 3. Again, that's 0. Again, it goes through y is negative 1. So y equals 0x minus 1, or just y equals negative 1. Uh, write an equation of the line that passes through the given point and is parallel to the given line. So, you know, in these past two, we got a slope of 0, and that's kind of annoying to me. But here, we, we exercise our, our line, uh, our linear equation writing skills, uh, given a, well, what are we given here? Well, we're definitely given a point that it goes through. And we're given the fact that it's parallel to this line. And the only relevant piece of information is this guy right here. What is this? It's the slope of this line. And then nothing else matters. This doesn't matter. The fact there's an x there doesn't matter. This y equals doesn't matter. Just that it has a slope of negative 1 half. This has a slope of negative 1 half. And if they're parallel, then our line has a slope of 1 half. Slope. Slope of uh, negative 1 half. Negative 1 half. Okay, so we're trying to write this equation, y equals mx plus b. We could write it in a couple different ways. Uh, we we want to write y equals mx plus b. Well, we have the m. The m is negative 1 half. So we know that much. But we also know that it goes through this point, so we have an example of an x and a y that work in this equation. So negative 3 equals negative 1 half times negative 5 plus b. So negative 3 equals negative 1 half times negative 5 is positive 5 halves. Subtract 5 halves from both sides. Subtract 5 halves. Um, yeah. So we have a negative 3 minus 5 halves. 
Uh, we have to get a common denominator, so b is equal to negative 6 halves minus 5 halves. That's negative 11 halves. Now we know what b is, and y is equal to negative 1 half x minus 11 halves. Or we could have used point-slope form. Point-slope form is y minus y1. y1 is negative 3. Equals the slope, negative 1 half times x minus x1, x1 is negative 5. So we get y plus 3 equals negative 1 half times x plus 5. We'll distribute that negative 1 half, y plus 3 equals negative 1 half x minus 5 halves. We can subtract 3, and we know subtracting 3 is the same as subtracting 6 halves. So y equals negative 1 half x minus 11 halves. So either way, we find the same equation. Here, we're told that the two lines are perpendicular, which means they have opposite reciprocal slopes. So this has a slope of negative 1 half, so our guy has a slope of the opposite reciprocal of negative 1 half, which is positive 2 over 1. So our equation looks like y equals 2x plus b. We know an x and a y, negative, five, or negative 6, 5. 5 equals 2 times negative 6 plus b. 5 equals negative 12 plus b. Add 12 to both sides. Add 12. So you get 17. y equals 2x plus 17. Write the equation of the line shown below. Well, if we want to write it like this, and I remember that this is the y-intercept and this is the slope, here's the y-intercept, and the slope is just how much I go over and up, right? So y equals, now what's the slope? We're going to go from here over to there, over to 4. So we've gone over 4. And we've gone from 2 up to 3, so we've gone up 1. 1 fourth x plus the y-intercept is 2. Okay. If we didn't know that, we could do the whole y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We still find a slope of 1 fourth. Um, then we can do like in the previous two problems you just watched me do. Plug in an x and a y, maybe this x and this y, or this x and this y and solve for b, which will turn out to be 2, and then we'll have it. Uh, write this in slope-intercept form. This is slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. How do I get that? Well, y needs to be by itself. y is not by itself. If we add 2x to both sides, then it will be. y equals 2x minus 19. Alright, move right along here. Write the equation in point-slope. That's important, point-slope form which is y minus y1 over m times x minus x1. It's on the front of the test there, the quest. Well, y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. We'll just clean it up a little bit and we'll be done. y plus 2 equals 4 thirds times x minus 3. There it is in point slope form. It's all done. OK, so we're, this is a, you know, a challenging question to see if you get it. Right? If you understand what all the pieces of the uh, linear equations are representing. Um, so you're draining a fish aquarium, which would imply there's water in it. If uh, there were no water in it, you couldn't be emptying it. Here's water, right? and you've got a, a hose stuck in there. taking out this purple water, which is probably why you were asked to clean it out, because it's purple. Um, purple's not a good color for water. Um, let's see. So after four minutes, there are 15 gallons left. OK, four minutes. Uh, minutes, gallons, gallons, four minutes. 15 gallons are left. Not 15 gallons came out, but 15 gallons are left. Okay, four minutes, 15 gallons are left. Uh, after eight minutes, nine gallons are left. Write the equation, okay. Um, well, I'm just gonna jump right to it and say, hey, look, these are like two points on a line, right? After four minutes, 15 gallons are left. After eight minutes, nine gallons are left. It's like x is four, y is 15, x is eight, y is nine, right? So um, 
we can find the slope between those two points, the rate of change of uh, water coming out of the, of the aquarium. 15 minus 9, that's how many gallons of change we've seen, right? What's the, the change in gallons between these two times? Well, that much. What's the change in time between these two times? Well, 4 minus 8, okay? So we get 15 minus 9 is going to be 6. 4 minus 8 is going to be negative 4, so this is going to be a negative 3 halves rate. What? Negative 3 gallons per 2 minutes, right? 2 minutes go by and we lose 3 gallons. 2 minutes go by and we get 3 gallons taken out of the aquarium, okay? Now some of you figured out this kind of intuitively, and that's great. Um, uh, some of you figured it out more um, uh, traditionally, I guess, recognizing it's a line and finding the slope and so on. So y equals negative 3 halves x plus, oh, b would go right here. I don't know what b is, though. All right, what's b? So let's find b. Well, we've got a y and an x right here, x and y. Maybe we'll use these because the numbers are uh, kind of single digits both. Maybe that's a convenient thing to have. So with 9 gallons left in the tank, it's taken 8 minutes for that to happen plus this B that we're trying to figure out, right? Um, so let's see, negative 3 halves times 8, so that's 8 over 1, we cancel the 2 with the 8, that's 4, and so we get 9 equals negative 3 times 4, negative 12 plus B, we add 12, add 12, and we get 21. So we know 21 goes there. Uh, when will the tank be empty? When will the tank be empty? So if it's empty, what does that mean? there's no water in it. it means there's zero gallons of water it means the y is zero and x is uh, well let's find out right so we'll put zero in for y I'll do this second part in red zero right zero gallons when will that happen solving for x will tell us exactly when that happens okay so negative 21 equals negative 3 halves x uh, so we'll multiply it by negative two-thirds on both sides. Multiply by negative two-thirds. Multiply by the reciprocal, right? Negative two-thirds. Three cancels with negative 21. This is a negative seven. Negative two times negative seven is 14. X equals 14. You might say, I did it a different way. And that's great. Do, do it a different way. Um, but certainly, uh, this is a very straightforward way. If you understand that y is the number of gallons and x is the time, tell the gallons what to be, and, and time will tell you what it is, right? Um, how much water did you start with? Well, if I just understand the basics of, uh, of a linear equation, right, I know that at zero time, I have this many gallons, right? So like 21, it comes right from this equation. That's the y-intercept. That's the interpretation of the y-intercept. Uh, it's what goes down when x is zero, okay? If I were to do this in a slightly longer version, not too hard. I'll just tell time to be zero, right? When you start, time is at zero, and I'm done because zero times negative three halves is zero, and y is just 21. So we started with 21 gallons. Okay. So with a, a fluent knowledge in linear equations, uh, you don't have to rack your brains as much to think like, how am I going to figure this out? You write the equation, and the equation tells you everything you need to know. Notice. The, equation, the question of when will the tank be empty is when gallons are zero. The question of how many gallons did you start with is when time is zero. Okay, this is the, the focus of these two questions were. Um, that does it. That's everything, I believe. We're going to see the answer sheet here, yeah. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions.